Hi everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne, and I'll be taking a look at this MSI X99A Tomahawk motherboard. This mobo is ready for war. Let's peruse the box details first. This is an X99 motherboard with support for Broadwell E processors. It's socket LJ2011 V3. We have USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports on the motherboard with transfer speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second. Also on the board sits Intel's twin gaming LAN. Along with MSI Gaming LAN Manager, you can fine tune networking performance for gaming. You get Audio Boost 3. In addition to the dedicated onboard sound card, the audio PCB is separated by a line of isolation. The line LED should light up when there's power. DDR4 Boost isolates the memory circuit for improved performance. There's Turbo U.2 and Turbo M.2 included as well. Turbo U.2 supports the latest NVMe SSDs on the market with transfer speeds of up to 2400 megabytes per second using a single drive. Turbo M.2 now supports NVMe SSDs with up to 32 gigabit per second speeds. Looks like there's also an option to add LED lights to your gaming rig. Cool. MSI's Mystic Light header provides software functionality for LED strips. Here's what you get in the box. Of course, there's a user manual, always keep that around as you never know when you'll need it. Here's your registration card and drivers and utility CD. This is a handy SATA cable label set. You get six SATA cables in both the L and straight plugs. We have an RGB LED extension cable for connecting an LED strip. Included is this SLI bridge connector. And it's always great when motherboards come with special connectors such as this M connector for making plugging in your front panel cables easier. This is the IO Shield, painted nicely in MSI colors and it's padded, yay! Here's a closer look at the motherboard. This is an ATX form factor board with a black PCB. It looks like you have the option to remove the heat sinks via screws. This motherboard has a black and gray color scheme. I like the muted tones and it'd be great in a stealth build. The Tomahawk cover protects against electromagnetic interference for optimized audio. You get some heavy duty heat sinks over the VRM and Intel X99 Express chipset. An eight phase VRM is used to power the CPU. The components used on the Tomahawk are military class five rated. MSI claims that the chokes on this board are capable of running at 220C. Here's the 2011-3 CPU socket. And dependent on the processor, there's support for Intel Turbo Boost Max Technology 3.0. These are the eight DDR4 DIMM slots supporting up to 128 gigs. You get quad channel memory that's XMP ready with support for DDR4 3333 MHz overclocked. With the right Xeon chip, the board has support for ECC and registered DIMMs. There's also compatibility with non-ECC unbuffered memory. I'm surprised there's no memory armor with all the steel protection on this board. Here are the PCIe ports. You get three PCIe 3.0 x16 slots armored to the teeth, which is great for preventing damage from heavy cards. There's support for three-way SLI and Crossfire. With a 40 lane CPU, you can run a single card at x16 or dual cards at x16, x16, and three cards at x8, x16, and x8. With a 28 lane CPU, you can run a single card at x16 or dual cards at x16, x8, and three cards at x8, x8, x8. Sandwiched between the top two x16 slots are the two PCIe 2.0 x1 slots. Next to these slots are the CMOS battery and clear CMOS jumper. Here's the 32 gigabit per second M.2 key M slot. It's protected by steel armor for EMI shielding, and it supports up to PCIe 3x4 and SATA 6 gigabit per second, as well as up to 22 110 storage devices. Let's take a walk on the edges. On the top edge is the eight pin CPU power connector. To the right are the pump fan and CPU fan connectors. On the right edge is the easy debug LED. Next up is the 24 pin main power connector. Here's the system fan one header. And this is the USB 3.1 Gen 1 connector. It's a charger port for fast charging. Next to that is the 32 gigabit per second U.2 port. Below that is another USB 3.1 Gen 1 connector. Here's the cluster of SATA 6 gigabit per second connectors. Six out of the 10 are located here. On the bottom edge or near it is the System Fan 2 header. And here are the remainder four SATA connectors. There's also the option to go SATA Express if you wish. Above the SATA is the front panel connector. To the left of that is the chassis intrusion connector. And here's the slow mode booting jumper used for LN2 cooling solution for extreme overclocking. This is the multi bio switch. In case one crashes, you can access the other. Over here are the USB 2.0 connectors. Next to that is another front panel connector. And these are the power and reset buttons. It's always nice when there are physical switches. Here's the debug code LED. Refer to the user manual for the debug code LED table. This is the RGB LED connector. The length of the LED strip should be no longer than two meters or the LED brightness will weaken. We have the TPM module connector here. Who actually uses this? I'm curious. Next up is the System Fan 3 header. And the last thing on this edge of note is the front audio connector. Here's a look at the fully armored rear IO. We'll start on this end with the PS2 port. Below that are two USB 2.0 ports. To the right is the clear CMOS button. Then we have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A port. There's also a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type C port. I like that you get both options. Here are four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports. Next up are the two Intel Gigabit LAM ports. Both come with LAM Protect, a 15 kilovolt anti-surge protection. The two ports can be used together for greater throughput. Moving on, we have two more USB 2.0 ports. And finally, here are the audio jacks and SPDIF out connector. You get the Realtek ALC 1150 codec and there's support for 7.1 surround. 
That wraps up this look on the MSI X99A Tomahawk motherboard. If you like what you saw and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media. Join Tech Lover Facebook, join Tech Lover again on Twitter, and join Tech Lover once more on Instagram. Also, be sure to check out my other YouTube channels, JTL Lifestyle, JTL Cuteness Overload, and JTL Love Life and Advice. I guess it's bye for now, and see you later!